C9's Blabber has been one of, if not the best jungler in North America for a while now. His aggression is unmatched and he is always leading the charge for his team and going for plays that very few others would dare to attempt. Despite his incredible play though, one of the things he's most known for is unfortunately a scuttle crab incident earning him the nickname of Crabber. Blabber be careful, where is your team? He he's at 200 HP, that is the worst scuttle take I have ever seen in my life! And it seems he can never live that mistake down. We want to fix this. In this skill capped and lol esports collaboration, we're going to show you that Scuttle is in fact not his favorite camp anymore. Blabber has found some new best friends in the Raptor camp and we're going to show you how his deep knowledge of this camp and how to play around it gives him and the rest of C9 such an edge on every early game. So let's get into it. As a jungler, the opening minutes of a game can definitely decide the flow of the entire match. If you get a good start, you can ride the momentum and eventually snowball you and your team to a win. So your opening route tends to be really important for setting the pace of the game. You want to farm your camps efficiently while playing around volatile lanes and accounting for any other variables that you can think of. So, having multiple starting routes in your arsenal is pretty important, so you can adapt from game to game. Let's take a look at an interesting route that Blabber seems to favor in a lot of his competitive matches. Very often, he'll start on the Raptor camp, then path through mid to the other side of the jungle to do blue and gromp, and only then will he loop all the way back around to his red side, clearing all the camps he left along the way. At a glance, this is kind of an odd pathing and a very roundabout way of full clearing the jungle. If you've never seen this route before, don't worry. We'll break down exactly why he does it so often and how you too can abuse it in your own games. It all begins at Raptors. Almost any jungler with an AoE ability can do this. The main benefit of a Raptor start is that your teammates don't have to leash. Getting to lane first is a big deal in a lot of lane matchups, especially at higher levels of play. This is why Raptor start is fairly popular in pro matches since it's the easiest camp to solo without any help. But what matters for you is actually the information denial. Without a leash, no one will know where you started in your jungle, making your opening route a mystery. You can see this indicated by Dignitas's pings on Blabber's Krugs and Gromp. They're not quite sure what exactly he's up to. It can be hard to feel this, but hiding your presence on the map does have actual impact on every single lane. If no one knows where you are, or where you're headed, the enemy laners have to respect that to some degree. It may mean they make less aggressive trades on your own teammates, maybe they're more afraid of dives or ganks, they waste their wards at a bad time, etc. You can often gain advantages on the map by not even doing anything. This is why hiding your path with a raptor start is so common. Moving on, the next important part of this clear is moving directly to blue and gromp for level 3. What's nice about this is that you're now close to either top or bot lane and can quickly influence that lane. In the case of this game, Blabber knew that Thresh is a fairly aggressive champion early on, so he may need to be down here to protect his bot lane in case of a really aggressive trade or a dive setup. That didn't seem to be the case this game, so he was free to just leave them on their own and continue farming. That being said, let's imagine a scenario where Blabber did gank bottom at this time. Typically, the response to an early gank is for the enemy jungler to invade when you show on the map. Out of all six camps in your jungle, Raptors are literally the easiest camp for any jungler to walk in and steal. They're very easy to access and quick to kill for almost any jungler in the game. So, if you follow this route in your own games and do end up ganking at level 3, you may still be invaded, but it won't be nearly as bad as it could have been otherwise. That being said, your main goal is to actually finish this route. So after seeing that his bot lane is fine, Blabber continues along. He does Wolves, Red, Krugs, and then wraps things up by securing Scuttle Crab. And here is where we'll see the actual main benefit of this route. You see, by clearing in this awkward way, you will conveniently end up taking the crab that is directly beside your raptors. And by the time you've full cleared, they're about to respawn, giving you an extra camp in the clear. That may not seem like a massive deal, but trust us when we say that it can completely snowball you out of control, which brings us to this guide's special skill cap tip. On a standard full clear with Scuttle, junglers end up with about 900 gold. But if you add the extra raptors, at the end, you'll end up with a total of around 1,000. This is incredibly important to know. Most junglers spike really, really hard with specific purchases between 1,000 and 1,100 gold. Assassins with Serrated Dirk, Bruisers with Iron Spike Whip, AP junglers with Sork Boots or Lost Chapter, Tanks with Bami Cinder, and so on. 
These spikes are so impactful early on that one of the major reasons Futures Market was changed was actually to stop junglers from doing a standard full clear and then being guaranteed one of these big spikes. It was just way too easy for junglers to snowball out of control if they got one of those items on their first base. The fun thing about this route is that it will enable that strategy to work. The extra Raptor camp still lets you cheat an 1100 gold base with Futures Market. This way, you can still stomp the early game in solo queue. Blabber does precisely this with the serrated dirt he recalls for. He heads towards bottom seeing that his bot lane is crashing a wave. Since he's on such a strong power spike, they coordinate a dive and kill Jinx. They do end up trading one for one, but that is obviously worth it. Jinx misses a ton of farm and is going to fall desperately far behind, putting Aphelios in a very easy position to win this lane and scale to carry. This route is very versatile and it's no wonder Blabber uses it so often in his games. That being said, it's definitely at its best when you're not expecting much action on the map early on. Staying out on the map farming extra camps before your first base is definitely a bit greedy. It works often in competitive because games tend to be a bit slower. In solo queue though, we'd recommend doing this if you're playing something that just wants to farm early or if you think that you're in a game where not much action will happen early on. That being said, farming extra camps before his first base and playing around a big first shop is something Blabber does very often, even if not with that specific route. Like in this game, he got an extra Raptors and Krugs before basing. Playing around an 1100 gold spike is just really impactful and this is is the best replay we could find to highlight it. Blabber gets caught and a chaotic fight begins around Dragon. What's funny though is that both teams begin battling to the death, but make sure to show some respect to the honorable 1v1 duel that ends up happening in the Dragon Pit. But Blabber has one of those 1100 gold items we talked about, whereas the enemy Vi is only on Ruby Crystal and a Longsword. This difference in early power is definitely a big reason for why he was able to turn this fight around so easily. We just spent a lot of time emphasizing why a Raptor start is so good, but it's not some perfect strategy that has no weakness. Obviously, you should be adapting your pathing every single game. The biggest strength of a Raptor start happens to be its biggest weakness, and it's something you can definitely exploit versus your opponents in solo queue. If you find yourself against a champion that tends to start at that camp in general, like Kane, Hecarim, Amumu, then you may want to try and pull this off. Blabber, at the start of this game, hovers his mid laner so they can place a ward on the Raptors. This is because they're versus a Maokai who tends to start here, especially in competitive games. Then Blabber goes to his bot side jungle and starts on red, while getting confirmation that Maokai is indeed starting at the Raptor camp. This is important. To punish a Raptor start, you'll want to begin your route on the diagonal side of the jungle. So if you were playing red side this game, you'd start on your top side jungle. Then Blabber just does a standard full clear and the reason is simple. Remember that the point of the previous route we learned is that you do a weird loop because it lets you end up on the side of the jungle that you started. So when you do the scuttle, you're right next to your respawning Raptors. Blabber is just doing the reverse here. He knows his opponent started Raptors, so he makes sure to end on the top side scuttle adjacent to that camp. This allows him to easily invade it after his full clear, effectively achieving the same result from our previous route. He moves in and quickly steals Maokai's raptors before basing. Now, the reason why this is such a big punish isn't just because you're taking a single raptor camp, it's because your opponent can't do anything in response. If we move over to Maokai's point of view, you'll see that he's aware of the invade. So as a response, he tries to move into Blabber's jungle to take his raptors, but of course, they're not up. This is the actual punish. By not starting raptors yourself, you're disjoint the respawn timers. The usual respawns to invades like this are to counter invade yourself. But when doing a standard route, this literally isn't possible, so Maokai just has to watch as he falls behind. Remember that stealing a camp is sort of like a two for one deal. You're not only farming a camp for yourself, but you're also denying one from your opponent. This is incredibly tilting for Maokai who can do nothing about it. With his small lead, Blabber recalls, gets a good base off, and immediately paths to his Krugs, which are the first camp that are respawning for him. He takes them to hit level five, and here's where he snowballs his small lead. What you have to understand is that as a jungler, Blabber knows that Maokai only has two options at this moment. Even though he doesn't have vision of him, he's completely aware of what he's probably up to. The first is that Maokai accepted that he's fallen behind a camp and just recalled. After that, he's likely to pass top because that's the side of the jungle that he started on. So he'd be pathing to his respawning Krugs. This would not be great for Maokai since he'd fall really far behind. He could do Krugs, but then he'd have no Raptors in the area to take, so he'd be pretty miserable. The second option is that Maokai is just lurking somewhere in the area. He's either trying to go for a desperate gank or waiting for these raptors to eventually respawn so he can steal them back. Regardless of what he's up to, both of the options that Maokai has are terrible for contesting Dragon. He's either on the opposite side of the map or he's extremely behind on tempo since he hasn't recalled. Which is why you see Blabber immediately ping to force Dragon, even when they're completely in vision. Regardless of what Maokai is doing, there is no way they could ever contest, especially with the priority from his bot lane at the moment. You can see for yourself, Maokai was 
as indeed just sticking around looking for a gank, which Tristana casually avoids. Despite all of the members of NRG having full HP, you can tell that they don't even bother contesting the dragon. Maokai is down a level and hasn't bought yet, so there's no way they could ever win a fight. Blabber has definitely got his early pathing down to a science, and a lot of his leads come from really understanding how to properly play around the raptor camp. Understanding how to path around its respawns and how to abuse it for item or tempo leads is a big part as to why he dominates so many early games. Keep a close eye on Blabber's early routes at Worlds this year and pay attention to how he plays around this super important camp. Anyways, thanks for watching.